Well, it's great to have Tracy with us mm -hmm. this afternoon. Wait till she shows you what she's got in the kitchen. It's amazing. Earlier in the show, Brian talked to us a little bit about the history of Return Day in Sussex County, a tradition that dates back to the late 18th century, I guess. Yeah, and one of the major parts of Return Day is the parade, which is set to take place tomorrow. And Brian is in Georgetown with more on part of the parade. Hey, Brian. Well, hey guys, how are you? Well, Lisa and Jimmy, uh, as you said, the horse-drawn carriage is part of the parade each and every year. It's one of the major attractions people will come down here to Georgetown to see. And I recently got to spend an afternoon on a farm in Lewis to see what it takes to get the horses and the coach ready. And I also got to see what the view is like from up top. Take a look. The coach rides are an important part of the return day parade in Sussex County. The winner and loser of each race ride in them together. It's tradition. You usually have a happy politician and an unhappy politician. Frances Baker is very familiar with the process. This year will be her ninth return day parade from atop one of the coaches. She also will be at the reins of her very own horses. Hey, Ricky. You ready to go, big boy? Frances invited us to her farm in Lewis to show us what it takes to get the horses ready for that day. They're crossbred horses. They're half Hackney and half Clydesdale. So they're high stepping and they're big. It takes about an hour to harness all four horses and make sure they're ready and presentable for the parade through Georgetown. Then it's time to get out the coach. This one is a reproduction of an antique. Built in Europe in 2003, it now belongs to Francis and her husband. Coaches date back to the 15th century and often showed one's status in society. It actually started in Europe and it was their first mass transportation. They used a coach as a road coach to go quickly from one town to the other. And then our coach is called a private park drag. And that would have been used by an individual to go out and just show off their horses and their coach and take their family for an outing. Once the carriage is out, it's time to put the four horses in place, two at a time. And it's interesting to note, out of all the horses, the ones in the front have it the easiest. The four horses um, has two leaders in the front and two what we call wheelers in the back. And the leaders in a parade don't do much. They're usually out of draft, they're not really pulling. But they are generally higher stepping and smaller and they're showier because that's the first thing that you see. And the two horses in the back that are called the wheelers are the ones that really pull most of the load. Now that everything and everyone is in place, it's time to take this coach for a ride. Okay, Brian, come on up. I'm coming. Get your top hat. I even got to dress the part, top hat and all. And with the release of the brake. Walk on. Good babies. We're on our way. Walk on. Uh, do you always use four horses? Uh, yes, with the coach because the coach weighs 2,500 pounds. Wow. Walk on. It's amazing to think that during our ride, the horses knew what to do by mainly listening to verbal directions from Francis. Walk you can on. tell by the way their ears are turned towards us when we're moving. Walk on. With a horse-drawn coach like this, you'll see two people getting on and off the back. They're known as grooms. The purpose of the grooms getting down when we stop is to head the horses and keep them still and quiet and so that they're safe. Another thing you'll notice, nobody riding inside the coach. There's a reason for that. Well, usually yep, yep. through history, the no one rode inside. I think sometimes if they had too many people, they would put their grooms inside, but it's not very comfortable inside. It's dark and bouncy. Trust me, the ride up top was much better. Brian, what you think? I liked it. I feel like I'm a member of the elite high-class society up here. It's, it's, a, it's a nice ride. Awesome. You did a good job, too. 
Thank you. After our ride, Francis showed me some of the amenities that come with the coaches. The back of the coach has a door that you open and it drops down and it becomes a table. And that is what we use to picnic off of when we go to like hunt races and tailgates and things like that. Here's another appointment that we use um, on our coach. It's called a coach horn. And this was used um, back a uh, hundred years ago to signal at the intersection that the coach was coming and later to entertain the passengers. Taking part in the return day parade and others just like it is no easy task. Francis works with the horses every day to keep them in perfect working order. It's a lot of time and dedication that she says is well worth it. Yeah, of course it's exciting. That's why we do it. And a special thanks to Francis and her husband Wayne for taking us along for the ride. Now the return day celebration will officially kick off tonight. The circle will be blocked off to traffic and then tomorrow morning starting at nine there will also be more music. The vendors, the food, all of that will be here open to the public for everyone to come on down and the parade will start at 1.30 and Rosalie told me before that it's all going to happen rain or shine. So the tradition is still going strong here in Sussex County. Jimmy, Lisa, we'll send it back to you guys. You know, I thought you looked pretty good in that top hat. You did. You may want to consider that I look. Did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I no. didn't know that much about it. I had absolutely I, no clue. So would this have been the, the beginning of the tailgate party? Um, we, we maybe could. <laughs> All right. We could. I'll invite you guys. Okay, that was the next That's question. What we were after. Okay. <laughs> thanks, All right, Brian. thanks a lot, Brian. <laughs> well, still to come on Delmarva Life, Andrew Taws got familiar with a camera lens when his beloved grandfather, Scorchy, included him in his storytelling. And now Andrew is retracing some of his grandfather's steps and joining the WBOC team. We're going to sit down with him next. But first, tis the season for giving here on Delmarva Life and DelmarvaLife.com. Over the next several weeks, we will be giving out gift cards to some of your favorite Delmarva businesses. Entering is easy. To learn more on how you can win at least a $50 gift card, Go to DelmarvaLife.com and click on the Holiday tab. Happy Holidays from all of us at Delmarva Life and DelmarvaLife.com. Today's winner is from Sussex County, Dave Rogers of Bridgeville. You won a $50 gift card from Kea Wellness Center in Rehoboth Beach.